Hi Flashes, this is Mrs. Reed. Uh, we are going to be talking about cylinders and cones today. So in your guys' notes packet, you can go ahead and go to the cylinder section and we are going to go ahead and talk about them. So if you guys don't know what a cylinder is, uh, this is what a cylinder looks like. So we have a curved side as well as two circles that make up the top and the bottom of it. Okay, so if I wanted to draw this picture of a cylinder, it would look something like this. So I have my two circles for the top and the bottom and then my rounded circular side, okay? So that definition is what I just said. So we have two identical flat ends that are circular and has a curved side. So two identical flat ends that are circular and have a curved side. So what I just talked about, the two circles, the top and the bottom are identical, and then we have the curved side that makes up the cylinder, okay? Uh, so remember, you guys can pause this video at any time. I'm just going to keep going ahead here. Uh, so the next thing on our notes page is talking about the number of faces. So remember, faces are our flat edges. So we do have a top and the bottom that are circles that are flat edges, or sorry, just flat faces. Um, and then our side won't count because of how it's rounded. So we do have two faces, the top and the bottom, and they are the two identical circles on our cylinder. Okay. And uh, now when it comes to the number of edges and vertices, so remember when we talk about edges, we need two faces to meet. Uh, to create an edge, so our two faces that we do have don't ever meet because uh, they're on opposite ends of each other, which means that we're not going to have any edges. And the number of vertices, we need three edges to meet, so if we don't have any edges, that means that we're not going to have any vertices either. Now when it comes to slicing this cylinder, let me go to my website here. And uh, notice that when I want to slice my cylinder in half horizontally, notice what shape it makes. So it does make a circle when I cut it horizontally. And then when I want to cut it vertically, notice how it creates this rectangle, okay? So when we cut it vertically, it makes a rectangle, and when we cut it horizontally, it makes a circle. So horizontal slice was the circle, and vertical slice was the rectangle. Okay, so now when it comes to the net itself, remember a net is when we open up this 3D figure and lay it down flat on a two-dimensional plane, and that's what it's going to look like. So if I were to go to my net of a cylinder, notice what happens when I open it up. So I open it up, notice how the top starts to open and the sides start to unfold. The bottom stays where it's at. And I open it up and lay it down flat, and notice how it kind of looks like a division symbol, okay? Uh, there are a, different, a couple different ways to draw nets. Uh, some people have circles on the left side and the right side down here, but the circles always have to be on opposite ends of our rectangle. Okay, so again, if I were to open it up and lay it down flat, notice how it does create that division symbol. Okay, so if I were to draw that, It would look something similar to this. And the things that we do need to know about our net is the side over here would be represented as our height. And then we do need to remember about radius and diameter, okay? So remember radius is talking about the distance that's halfway through the circle. And then diameter, so I can put that down here, diameter 
is talking about the distance across the circle through the center. Okay, so they could give you one or the either. So we'll talk about how to go from one to the other on our next page when we do some examples. Okay. All right, so go ahead and turn the page for some examples. Oops, sorry. Okay, so uh, to find volume of a cylinder, uh, we do have a volume formula, and that formula is volume equals capital BH. Remember, capital B is talking about the base of our object. So in this case, the area of a circle is talking about the area of the base. So an area formula of a circle is equal to pi r squared, and then we still need to attach on that h, okay? So pi r squared comes from the area of a circle. So what we need is we need the radius in order to plug it in to solve for the volume of a cylinder, okay? So look at a. It says dimensions are in inches and keep pi in your answer. So when it says keep pi in your answer, that means that we are not substituting 3.14 in for pi. We are just going to leave pi alone, okay? So let's start with our formula. Volume equals pi r squared h. Since they told us they want us to keep pi in our answer, we are just going to drop down the pi symbol. R means radius, and if you notice, they tell you that our radius is 4, because remember, radius is talking about the distance halfway through the center of the circle, and we want to square it, and then height is talking about how tall our cylinder is, so in this case, it is 10. All right, so since they do want us to keep pi in our answer, once again, we're just going to bring down that pi symbol for our answer, and then we just need to simplify. So we first need to take 4 squared, which is 16, because 4 times 4 is 16. Take that times 10, and we get 160. So our answer in this case is pi 160, but we usually keep pi after the number. So we will have it as 160 pi. And then don't forget your units. So we're talking about inches, and we are talking about volume. So it's going to be cubic inches as our answer. Okay. So let's try another one. So let's try B. So dimensions are in centimeters. Use 3.14 for pi. So now we are going to substitute 3.14 in for pi. So let's go ahead and write down our volume formula, which is pi r squared h. This time we can substitute 3.14 in for pi. r means radius, so here is the radius of the circle because it is halfway through the center. So our radius is 5, and they tell us to square it. And then height is talking about how tall the cylinder is, so in this case it's 6, okay? So now all we have to do is solve it. So thinking of PEMDAS, we always need to do the exponent first. So we need to take 5 squared, which is 25, because 5 times 5 is 25. Then we can take that times 3.14, take that times 6, and all of that would give us 471 and we do need our units so we're talking about centimeters so this is going to be cubic centimeters okay so some of your guys' teachers may want you to take an extra step by saying that that's 25 so you guys may have to write down the 5 squared is 25 like this, so that then you're showing me that you're multiplying all three of those numbers. Uh, so just make sure you guys ask your teacher what they would rather prefer you do, okay? All right, now for our application problem. So C, at most theaters, large size popcorn is a cylinder with a diameter of nine and six inches tall. Uh, the medium size container has a diameter of six inches and is eight inches tall. 
So use 3.14 for pi and find the difference in their volumes. Okay, so we need to find the volume of the large popcorn and the medium popcorn. So let's go ahead and find the large one first. Start with your volume formula. Volume equals pi r squared h. And then we need to be careful here. Okay, so they do tell us that we need to substitute 3.14 in for pi. So I can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to substitute 3.14 in for pi. However, we need to plug in radius. They tell us that our diameter is 9. So if you guys remember, diameter is talking about the line that goes all the way through the circle through the center. And to be able to get the radius, I just want half of that. So what do you guys think we should do if we have the full line and we want half of it? So what can I do with 9 to get my radius if I want half of it? So hopefully you guys are thinking, well, half means divide by 2, right? So I can take 9 divided by 2 to give me 4.5, and that would give me my radius of the large popcorn, okay? Sorry, that's a 4. So what I want to plug in for 5, or R, is 4.5 and not 9, since 4.5 is my radius and 9 was my diameter. Okay. H is height, and they tell us that the height of the large popcorn was 6. And then now I can just plug that in my calculator and solve. So remember, do your exponent first. So you want to take 4.5 squared. And then you can take that times 6 times 3.14. And you would get a volume of 381.51 inches cubed. So now we do need to do the same thing with the medium-sized popcorn. So volume equals pi r squared h. Same thing, they gave us a diameter of 6. So if I had my diameter of 6 and I'm trying to get the radius, which is half of it, to get the radius, all you have to do is divide by 2, so then you'll get a radius of 3. So go ahead and plug in your numbers, 3.14 for pi. We just said that our radius was 3. And then the medium-sized popcorn has a height of 8. So then when I go to solve this and simplify it, 3 squared is 9 times 8 is 72 times 3.14 gives me 226.08. Okay. And then the last thing that we need to do uh, is find the difference in the volume. So difference means subtract. So I need to take the large size popcorn and subtract it from the medium size popcorn and I get 155.43 inches cubed. All right, so you guys can try the last problem on your own and then when you are finished, click the play button and we can go through it quickly. All right, so you should you, you guys should have had your volume formula. Um, they did tell you to plug 3.14 in for pi. Uh, they tell you the diameter is 10, so to get the radius, remember that you need to take diameter divided by 2. So that would be 10 divided by 2 to give you 5, which is your radius. So you should have plugged in 5 for r. And then the height is 6. And then when you solve this, 5 squared is 25 times 6 times 3.14 gave you 471 inches cubed. Okay? That wasn't your answer, though, because they're asking how much would it be if it was 2 thirds to the top. So your last step would be to take that 471, multiply it times that 2 thirds, and then that would have given you your 314 inches cubed as your final answer. So good job if you got that. 
Um, if you guys need any help, just ask your teachers, but move on to the next video to talk about combs.